<clears throat> there's a tutorial on uh, the Subsonic forum on how to install it on Ubuntu, which is essentially the same as Debian. And uh, essentially, you got you need to install Sun, Sun Java, I should say, and then you can create the directory, untar it, and run it. It wasn't quite as simple as that. I had to do a few more editing things about permissions, but uh, I was able to get that up and running. Uh, the next thing I wanted to install was uh, Apache Web Server, which was pretty simple. Um, you just do an apt get install Apache 2 and it'll install it for you. Um, as well, configuration was a little bit a little bit difficult, but I essentially copied my backup web server files into the var www, and there we go. That was all my web files. Just copied them over and replaced the index that they already had that says it works, um, and it was up and running. Apache 2 is slightly different from Apache itself. Oops, All right, couldn't find the Apache thing for a second. Got it back though. <laughs> Basically, a CD, Etsy, Apache two, and then in there is all your configurations. Um, it's changed in Apache two. Uh, the Apache two dot conf holds a lot of your configurations <clears throat> instead of the HTTPD. And you can edit it. Uh, this isn't really an Apache tutorial, but uh, you can edit it, everything from there or um, from the sites available, mods available, or some. The httpd.conf is actually empty. I think you can add whatever you want there to make it easier. <clears throat> the next thing that I installed to this is something I wanted to try out was Webmin which is basically a web-based administration for your server, uh, for Debian Linux. Um, and uh, it was a very simple install, just uh, apt to get install webmin, and it was installed, and port 10,000, and there you go. Now this is a lot of different features available. Um, you can check a lot of different system options. You can check your Apache web server, virtual hosts, global configurations, processes. It's uh, it has a lot of options. Um, Sambo, Wimble, Sambo Windows file sharing is another great one. I had to configure this manually, and this would be a lot simpler through through this um, instead of locating where all the Samba configuration files are and editing them directly. You can here you can edit directly if you want. Uh, essentially I added I added uh, these two shares manually. And what you can do here when you are configuring it originally is don't see it in here but you change it so that you're able to uh, read write which means I had to mount my external hard drive with NTFS 3G and add that to the Etsy fstab file but anyway that's a very useful tool for me and that should about wrap up my quick little tutorial about uh, installing Debian and getting X1140 working, uh, Apache up and running, Subsonic, and Webman. Actually there's one more thing I, need, I actually needed for my server which was a BitTorrent client which I use a lot of times for downloading new distros of Linux. Uh, I know my new Ubuntu distros download a lot faster than they usually do uh, over BitTorrent than, any, than they would through a direct download. Um, the uTorrent is the one I'd used on my Windows server, however, 
for this server, I decided, um, since Utorrent was was not available, to go with transmission. Uh, it's pretty simple. You really don't have a whole lot of options to select from, but uh, it does work. And and you are able to um, to set it up so that if I say saved a torrent file to a network folder uh, transmission would automatically pick that file up and automatically download it and delete the torrent file which is something I really liked with uTorrent. The last thing that I had hoped transmission would have which it did not was a actual web UI. Uh, they do have Clutch, which I have unfortunately not been able to get working with uh, transmission at this time. Uh, it says it's not running, unfortunately. With Debian, the archives are a little out of date. In the newer, the newer versions of this. Um, it is actually integrated directly into, into transmission so you don't have to set it up uh, individually and get them to work and play well together. Alright, and that should about cover it for my server. The only things that I have left to get up and running are Hamachi for VPN, uh, which might be changing in the future, and perhaps an OpenDNS updater, which I think I can just do on my router. Anyway, that should about wrap up my tutorial.